<laughs> we survived BravoCon and barely lived to tell the tale. But we are here to fill you guys in on the good, the bad, and the booing. Virtual reality. Hi, I'm Danny. And I'm Evan. And this is our special BravoCon episode with so much inside scoop because we were both there. Yes, we both spent some money on merch and memories. Yeah, <laughs> and, and most importantly, we survived. And I mean, since this is our BravoCon special, we need to give you guys all the stories that happened at the event over the past three days. But Evan, before we get into that, I need to hear about your night because your Saturday took a little turn and you uh, got a little turn, didn't you? It was okay. Yeah, it, it, it did. Yes, a turn and then a turn. It <laughs> was, uh, I, I, you know, I live in LA, so I'm only in New York every every now and then and this was BravoCon and I decided to do it up big for Saturday night a little bit too big I was out until like nearly five in the morning and I 100% regretted it the next day I'm still regretting it I'm so tired I don't did you know Red Bull I'm... did you Red Bull vodka like Joe Gorga or like I should have do you know what that's why I'm that's why I didn't do so well is because I didn't mm -hmm. do Red Bull vodkas um but yeah, good, good point. I, I feel like I need a Red Bull vodka right now <laughs> to, to even remember what I did. So you were moderating the Jersey uh, boys and their ladies part one with like the Gorgas, Margaret and uh, Jackie. And it got so explosive. And I need to know your point of view on it because I think everybody in the audience and online is still recovering. Okay, so this is how it started with shots backstage. I get, oh. I get backstage. The first person there is Joe Gorga. He is looking so cute and delicious in his tight black sweater and he is so nice so sweet and immediately he's like hey let's go do shots all right listen bravo con it's 11 30. 12 something, 12 something. Yeah. 12 something. <laughs> we're gonna start sh shots baby by the got... somewhere beningo right. joe beningo evan and the real evan from page six Let's go, go, baby. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm just like in Jersey husband heaven and we're taking shots and we're having fun. And then the girls come and it's just like getting better and better and better. The vibes are right. They are correct. Joe's drink of choice was uh, Red Bull vodka. So we were like living that kind of like Jersey Shore fantasy, which was really fun. He just, he, he wanted the energy and he gave us the energy when he got on stage. Well, first he gave his little like, a miniature comedy set, which I appreciated. Like that's- Did Eddie Murphy raw. And this $10 million job, I'm giving it to my friend, Joe Benigno. Yeah, he yeah. <laughs> And then, you know, I can't remember how we got to Joe just pacing across the stage and, and talking about Teresa. How did, how did we get there? Do you remember? Oh, yes. Cause it was a girl asking the question was, fame more important than your family. And Melissa gave her nice, sweet answer. Everybody, I think, thought they were going to move on to the next question. And then he literally, it was like, like Sunday service. He rose Phoenix from the ashes of Red Bull and then delivered a speech about contractors, electricians, family. If I'm a brother and I'm a sister, I'm a brother, I'm a cousin, I'm a mother, and I get this construction job, and I built this building, and I have a cousin that does electrical. I'm giving you the job. Did I loved the performance. I think that, you know, his activation certainly got the, the audience excited. So, oh. go Joe. Like, I was, I was totally here for it. It was the panel an hour before the part two Jersey panel. So enough things were able to be posted online. Enough of the crowds was able to have their own Red Bull vodka. So then when it was Teresa, Jennifer, and Dolores, people were shouting during that panel, like, uh, you hear what Joe said? And Teresa, I will say to her credit, didn't take the bait, but you know who did? Jennifer Aiden. And Jennifer was just kind of like, uh, she literally said verbatim, like, Joe and Melissa are doing what they can to stay alive on the show. They're, they're holding on to dear life. She was like, honey, they do, like she did a little, little dance with it. And I don't think that made the Gorgas too happy. Oh yeah, that was the same night. That was the same night. It was Saturday night where the, this hotel lobby drama happened where apparently there was some sort of altercation. A drink was thrown via Jennifer Aiden. I <laughs>
I mean, it, it's kind of a, a tricky situation because the videos that are coming out from it aren't like super clear. They're Blair Witch Project. Bravo. Now I guess everybody, I feel like everybody already knew it, but now it can be known because they all checked out. Everyone was staying in the same hotel room or the same, same hotel. And even Lala said on our Instagram stories, like, if y'all want the real tea, just walk up and down the halls because everybody's shouting at everybody and you can hear everything. And it's not like the Bravo was like, no, everybody gets along. Because Andy even said to himself that your whole, because your panel, it was supposed to be Friday with the men. And then there was a whole update and alert switched. Oh, and yeah. Andy confirmed why, why, why was the switch? Why was the switch? So the switch is basically because Melissa and Teresa can't share the same stage. But during my panel, Melissa said up and down, she she really stuck to her word that it was not at the behest of her. She's not the one who made the call to any Bravo exec. So she was kind of implying that it was Teresa's call. And I will point out that the original Jersey Men panel that I was supposed to moderate was all the men with the exception of Louis. Louis was not involved in any panel, really. If I had to surmise, mm -hmm. I think that Teresa was like, let's get Louis involved and make him feel a part of it. Because I think, like, we know that Louis likes the limelight. He likes yeah, he told us that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He, he enjoys it. But to your point, it is really interesting that Jersey is so bad. They can't be on the same stage because the Beverly Hills ladies they all shared the stage and I don't think they got really along. I mean, that was nuts. Rinna getting booed. Ooh. Her giving the finger, then calling herself a rock star and then comparing herself to The Rock. I feel like she listens to Nicki Minaj's Chun-Li in her head because she's like, okay, you want, you painted me out to be the bad guy. So it's kind of like, she's just like, okay, I'm going to lean into it. I give her credit for being there, especially because it kind of was Kathy Khan. That was the biggest gag of it all. The second Kathy walked into any room, people lost their marbles. And it would always turn into a Kathy chant, it, whether she was just walking through the Brava Palooza Bazaar or even at Watch What Happens Live, like during commercial breaks, people just started like chanting like Kathy, Kathy. And she was doing her most Kathy, Kathy is cathisms like in the middle of watch what happens she like just like walked off the stage to go use the bathroom and then returned at her at her own pace and she ate a hot dog in the press line oh, yeah yes she she fully grabbed she saw someone walking with a hot dog and was like oh i i need to bite of that hot dog and like just kind of like coaxed this person into feeding her <laughs> hot dogs and a few french fries on the carpet she like literally scarfed it down and then she was good to go and i will say despite all the drama that Kathy Hilton has been involved in this season, she stopped for every single person on the press line and spent at least a good three minutes with someone. And that is a long time on the press line. Like, it, And it was a long, long press line. You saw Kathy and Kyle and Dorit hanging out. Didn't really see Kyle and Dorit with the other half of their group. Erica and Rinna, I, I'm sensing a divide specifically and i'm kind of feeling that's more there's more proof to that pudding after erica said that she could see dorit and pk getting divorced dorit and PK. i could not believe that especially because i would love to know what has happened since filming wrapped and now because dorit has always been so supportive mm -hmm. of erica through through all the legal drama and and all the hate she got so like what switch and we actually got a hysterical response from pk basically saying like erica thought she wasn't gonna get in trouble erica thought she could keep the earrings and then erica should just stop thinking <laughs> pk is funny he is funny he is really funny and well i can't imagine pk and dorit heading to divorce we do know that divorce looks good on at least two Bravo celebrities, especially this weekend. Yeah, we got Ashley Darby, who is in the midst of her divorce from Michael Darby. And then we have Katie Maloney, who recently finalized her divorce mm -hmm. from Tom Schwartz. And they are both living their best single girl oh. lives. Ashley and Luke from Summer House, they are so adorable together. And people were freaking out over them okay. i think it's real i really i truly don't think it's like a pr move i know that they exchanged numbers he said that he wants to start taking the train from uh, new york to dc to go see her so i'm i'm here for that he is someone that i think she needs and i also weirdly think he's older than her i want to say he's like somehow 37 and she's 35 i might just be making up all those numbers some people on bravo are going a little younger and it's working oh. for them though 
Oh my God. Yes. So I chatted with Katie Maloney on the carpet and she like spilled some major tea. I asked her about if, if she's on the apps and she was like, oh, I was going to try Raya out. It didn't work out, but I just like sliding into people's DMs on Instagram. She was like, Instagram is the best dating app. And then she was like, and the best part about Instagram is like a lot of the guys like using it as a dating app are kind of young. And I was like, how how young do you go? And she was like, well, I guess 25 because that's like the age of the guy I'm seeing right now. So anyways, good for her. I think she's having a lot of fun. And I wonder if we're going to see this 25 year old on the next season of Vanderpump Rules. Something tells me no. I feel like Katie is really like holding this close to the chest, whereas like Schwartz is just like out here kissing Raquel <laughs> with no, no worries. No, <laughs> I did just Katie yeah. for her thoughts on Raquel and Schwartz. And she was like, no comment no, no thought I, I think she's trying to just move past all that but he wasn't the Vanderpump guy who was the messiest this weekend so at least Katie can be proud of her ex for that because it was James Kennedy whose loose lips sung some southern charm chips oh my god yeah the no pretty girls on southern charm I can't believe he said that first of all there are so many pretty girls on southern charm it's like full of only pretty girls I, I saw Catherine Dennis in person did you see her oh. No, she is like a glamazon supermodel. She's like ten feet tall, oh. gorgeous red hair, a spray tan to die for. She looked so good in person. Ooh. I was like not expecting to be just like hit with all that beauty. He said that quote, but he accidentally said Southern Charm instead of another show. First of all, it was mistaken like shows because there's obviously a lot of breakdowns on shows. What show were you talking about? There's only gorgeous people in general. We are all beautiful in our own unique way, James Kennedy. And you should know that. We differ on two things now, throwing drinks and that everybody's gorgeous. But yes. what I think we do agree on is that I'm kind of excited about the new Roni cast. Oh my God. Okay, so I was there at the Watch What Happens live taping when they walked onto the stage and Andy Cohen announced them. And to be honest, like... I wasn't expecting to get so emotional, but like I had full body chills and I think like maybe like the the beginning stages of like a Lauren Conrad single tear. Like I was just like feeling everything for these girls. And then Andy said something like, I told you girls, like the, the minute you walked out of those doors, your life is going to change forever. And like, it's so true. I, I have high hopes for these women. It seems like an exciting group of girls. Like it's, it's like, I don't know, diverse, it's young, it's sexy, it's fun. We have Jenna Lyons. I don't know why I got so, so excited for her because I just love, I mean, oh my God, yes. And I also love too that you kind of have her as like established New Yorkie that we know, but then these new girls coming all around to kind of put her in her place. And I just want to know where everybody lives, not in a creepy way. I just want to know what neighborhood they're in. But I'm so excited to, to see the show. Unfortunately, they don't start filming until next month. And Oy, so that means we're going to have to wait probably a good little while before the show actually comes out. But I'm excited that they figured out the cast for the reboot because Andy said the next step is figuring out the legacy cast. It looks like our girl Dorinda is going to be on it. So I mean, she's I'm coming excited. off pause. I am so excited for that. And I'm also more excited to hear from everybody else that went to BravoCon. What did you love? What did you hate? Are you going back next year? Also, if you saw anything that you're like, nobody is talking about this, but you saw some drama. Hit your boys up.